So, a very warm welcome to our Harvest Family Service, um, to those of you here in St Mary's, and those of you joining us online, you're all extremely welcome. Harvest is when we're thankful for what the earth has produced, being thankful to God. At the heart of thankfulness is generosity, and at Harvest we think about the importance of everyone in the world having enough. This earth is a gift from God, and the more we discover about it, the more we realise it is complex and interconnected. So at our service today, we will give thanks for this wonderful earth, and particularly bees. And Rosemary has brought in a, a marvellous tea towel, which um, if you haven't looked at that before you leave, you'll be um, something of an expert on bees at Kew. But bees are one way that we can show our care for the world. And in the Bishop's Harvest Appeal this year, a way to look after others who have much less than ourselves. So we turn in our order of service. We remember God's presence here with us now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And some words from Psalm 67. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. Amen. So we start with our first hymn. Those of you who are online, please sing up. And those of us here will sing in our hearts, but say the words if you wish. Thank you. So, would you please have a seat? <clears throat> so, a little introduction to the 
whole topic of bees. I'll come out in front of you. Okay? Be careful not to set myself on fire. Um, do you like the um, bees and the flowers? We made them at Missy Church last week, and I thought I'd give them another outing. <laughs> so there they are. It's very nice to have them with us. And I, I had a spare one which we put on there. But if you haven't done Missy Church, there's a little reminder that we do have great fun um, and enter into thinking more about God as we do it. So here's a few facts about bees, which, um, have we got some children joining us today? We have Loki. Jolly good. So for the children and hopefully for the adults, here's a few things you might enjoy knowing about bees. Bees have five eyes and six legs. Bees in a hive are divided into different groups. Honeybees harvest nectar and pollen from flowering plants. Good to see if someone else has come to learn about bees. Hello. I do like your mask. Very cool. We're just learning about bees. Okay, we're just learning about bees. So bees in a hive are divided into different groups. Yeah. Honeybees harvest nectar and pollen from flowering plants. Yeah, you can see a bee there is making its way down to that flower. Male bees, male bees in the hive are called drones. Hi, so good to see. We're just learning about bees. Male bees in the hive are called drones, and they do not have a sting because they're too busy. Worker bees, I'm sure I'm going to get a reaction from the women here. Worker bees are females. <laughs> <laughs> Honey bees in large groups are called colonies. And I wonder if anyone knows how many bees are in the average colony. It surprised me, I must admit. Do you reckon there might be 500? Who reckons 500? More what they're reckoning here. How about 1,000? No, you're going 5,000. No. Oh, you're not going to inform somebody. 10,000. That sounds about right. It isn't. It's 50,000. Wow, amazing, isn't it? 50,000. And to make honey, bees drop nectar into honeycombs. And then they evaporate it to get the liquid out of it by fanning their wings. So when you hear bees buzzing, you know they go bzz, 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 don't they? That's their wings beating to create air so that they get rid of the water. Yeah. And did you know that it um, takes the average bee a whole lifetime to make just half a teaspoon of honey? So that's where it is so hard for that little bit of honey you put on your toast, don't they? Yeah. And honey. I found out it's the only food that contains all the substances necessary to sustain life, including water. Yes, yeah, so honey's an amazing food, isn't it? Now those bees, I mentioned the buzzing noise. Do you know how fast their wings beat in a minute? It's, it's a really amazing. 11,400 times in a minute. I can't imagine that speed, can you? But that's why we get that noise because their wings are going back and forth so fast. Yeah. And bees are very important, aren't they? They pollinate nearly 90% of wild plants and 75% of our crops, you know, the bread that we get from wheat and all those sort of things. All these crops around the world, they all need the bees to play their part. Now, unfortunately, Bees have been hit in the last few years, not only by pests and diseases, but by some of the chemicals we put on our fields to try and get rid of the pests and diseases. And we're aware of that now. We're trying to look after the bees, aren't we? So we hope more of them will come back. But without the bees, we'd be in a sorry state indeed. So just think about our lovely world now. How delicate it is. It really needs us to look after it. So we're going to think about our world and the way we use it in the words of the confession.
God has blessed us, but still God's children go hungry. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you loose those who are bound and open the eyes of the blind. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you watch over the stranger in the land and uphold the orphan and the widow. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We've got a special prayer today, which we call the Collect. It's in your order of service and it's up here. So, would you like to join in saying it with me? Lord of creation, whose glory is around us and within us, open our eyes to your wonders that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our lives end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we've got two readings today in our service. And the first one is going to be read by Sue Jacob. And we're going to have Sue joining us on Zoom. Thank you, Sue. Hold on a minute. It's a letter that Paul wrote to the Philippian church. About two a reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking on the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has also highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue conf should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. <clears throat> Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much so much more now in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is, at, who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to do work for his good pleasure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you very much, Sue. Now we're going to hear some words of Jesus from Matthew's Gospel. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad someone's excited about it. It's good. To hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, oh, What authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I'm doing this. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, 
he will say to us, why then did you not believe me? But if we say of human origin, we're afraid of the crowd, for all regards John is a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither would I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later, he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, well, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. But John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise yes. to you. For you, O Christ. So, we're going to hear a bit about what we're doing today, because we're going to be helping some people a long way away in a country called Nepal, which is over near China. It's a long, long way away. And we're going to watch a little video now about that. It's had to come all the way from China, so it takes a while. Yeah. Alice looks remember how his laptop works, it's really good. Yeah, it's up. Well, I just need to make it so the guys on Zoom can see it. Meet Manish. He's a pastor and a beekeeper. After two huge earthquakes hit Nepal in 2015, people could no longer rely on farming for their food and income. They needed a new solution. With training from Tier Fund's partner, the community realised that a solution was there all along. Bees. Together with Pastor Manish, they started a pilot project. It keeps him pretty busy and is a great success. The bees produce lots of honey and beeswax, which they can sell in the market. Now the project is spreading all over the valley, providing more communities with new livelihoods. There we are. See, he's farming bees. Yeah, he's, he's got, remember we were talking about the bees? He's got lots of them. In our first reading, St. Paul said this, he said, let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. We are struggling, aren't we, with the coronavirus pandemic? I don't need any reminders about that. But many more people are experiencing hardship, which is why we're especially continuing to support DENS, our local organisation which helps with food banks and much else. But some people in some countries have even more challenges. And as Christians, we're called by God to help those who have so much less than we have. Nepal is the target, as you saw, for this year's Bishop's Harvest Appeal. Nepal is a country of about 30 million people, bordered by China and India and Bangladesh. And as we heard, in 2015, it was struck by two devastating earthquakes. And these killed about 9,000 people and injured almost 22,000. 
So many thousands of people were affected. Families lost loved ones. Communities were made homeless. And infrastructures collapsed. The livelihoods were lost. The Christian organization Tear Fund, you saw its little logo up there in the video, has been working to help people build income to support their families. And in recent years, Nepalese people have found a growing appreciation of the value of farming bees. Bees help to maintain biodiversity, it's a big word, but it means keeping the countryside flourishing. So bees are important for that as pollinators and they're important to help crop production. But as Manish is finding, good income can also be produced from selling honey. And honey is a popular export item. So after the earthquakes, Manish managed, like so many, to find ways of supporting his family because it was not easy at that time. And he was helped by a church program to learn about how to farm bees, and he now helps to pass on his skills to others, which is why it's said on the video it's, it's spreading around the valley. It's, it's the aim of Tear Fund and the Bishop's Harvest to appear in um, partnership with each other that we could really increase the number of beehives around Nepal so many, many more people would get the income from effectively farming bees. There are, they reckon there are about 26,000 um, beehives around Nepal at the moment, but they reckon we could boost that up to 125,000. Now, 60 to 70 hives, that's a lot of numbers today, but 60 to 70 hives could support a family of up to 10 people by the income that it produced, and of course, by it and the honey themselves too. So, money from this year's harvest appeal will help many more families to recover financially from the effects of the earthquake. More bees will help the ecosystems to flourish as well. So all around is a winner. So even in this pandemic, as Christians, we must continue to be thankful for what we have and as Paul says, to look to the needs of others. By continuing to do this, by supporting dens and the Bishop's Harvest Appeal, we are, I believe, faithful to the mind of Christ, showing love as we have received love from God ourselves. A final thought. It was Soren Kierkegaard, the Danish philosopher and theologian, who observed that the door to happiness always opens outward. Amen. Now, I wonder if um, have we got this special harvest appeal prayer. Um, huh? yeah, right. could, we all, could we all say that together? Mighty Creator, loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonder and beauty of your world and for your extraordinary love poured out for all people. We ask you to equip and strengthen the Nepalese communities that were impacted by the brutal earthquake of 2015 to rebuild their lives with hope and purpose. We pray that they would know your generous provision and your guiding presence with them. Bless the beekeeping initiatives. May they flourish and through them we pray that lives would be enriched and communities transformed. In Jesus' life, we pray. Oh. Now, we're going to sing about flowers. Um, if you're online, we'll be singing, we'll be saying the words, but they're lovely words in this hymn because they remind us that we can't take the natural world for granted.
for all the bees. And we pray that God will bless them and their hives. Let us pray that the hives will always be home to healthy colonies of bees producing an abundance of filled honeycombs. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Let us pray for the people of Nepal and all communities devastated by earthquakes, floods and fires as they work to rebuild their lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much, Catherine. Now we're going to have a, a very traditional harvest hymn. Again, we'll be singing in our hearts here, uh, but saying the words, but online you can really belt it out. I hope we can hear Harry's laptop shaking in the volume. <laughs> And uh, just a reminder that um, if you are going to support the Bishop's Harvest Appeal, um, the details are available. Um, and please um, notice we've got the giving codes at the back of the orders of service too, for you to give through QR codes as well. Thank you very much. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing 
upon all things created and upon us his children that we may use his gifts for his glory and the welfare of all people and the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit remain with you always amen let us go in peace the love and serve the lord in the name of christ amen Now I'd love to start up a choir, and I think one or two people got good voices, so you might want to encourage them. It's lovely to see, it's so lovely to see. I love the unicorn head here, that's very interesting, I like all this. So, great to be with you online and in Zoom. Um, we have a time now for notices. Um, can I say thank you to those who have done some harvest decoration? Obviously, we can't do the you know, the, the things we would normally do under coronavirus, but we've made it look very nice, and I'm very grateful. And uh, I do like the BTs out, that's uh, certainly a, a, on a wish list for me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now, I think Janet has got a, a notice, she's eagerly waiting there, so I shall retire. Sadly, as the secretary of the PCC, I have this um, boring job of preparing for the annual meetings. The annual meeting is in two weeks' time, two weeks today, 11th of October. We still need some nominations. Um, we're, we're using the chart that we started in March. Um, so the people who are already on it from March, um, they, they're still, they're okay. But because we had to delay the APCA to October, it's not fully filled in. So we need some nominations for, thank you, Harry, um, assistant wardens. Um, we'd like at least two more, please. We have one already. We'd also like nominations for members of the PCC, the Parochial Church Council, which is a very important body that monitors sorts out everything we do. We need four in total. We've got two at the moment on that, so we need two more nominations. We also need um, one more nomination for Deanery Synod. Um, we've got one. We can do with another nomination. Obviously, we can have more than that if there's lots of people that would like to, to join on this. I want to um, say it that would trigger elections. So if somebody also wants to nominate themselves or be nominated for church warden, that would also be fine. But that would that would trigger an election. Um, so please talk to people you know, have a think about it, ask them if they're prepared to be nominated, and either write it on this form that's at the back of the church or email it to me. If you do write it on the form, please also email it to me on St Mary's email address so that I can keep it all up to date. Um, we need a proposer and a seconder for each one. Um, and if they're not written on this form, I do definitely need emails from the proposers and the seconders. Does that make sense? The other thing um, in preparation for the annual uh, meeting, I'm pleased to say we've actually published the revised electoral roll today. It's on the board in the refectory. But that has to be published two weeks before, at least. So, Please you Thank you. And I think we should have a little bit of your I I'd love to give the children one of these beads each, but I suspect it's not going to be, is it? I knew it wasn't, yeah. so <laughs> we won't go there. But uh, my instincts were to want to give one of those. But you can make them yourselves at home, and Laura would show you the the, the kits, Chantel, there's a lovely kit um, that we used at Missy Church, and they're, they're quite easy to make, so you can maybe make some at home, which would be a, a nice thing to do. Um, there you go. Did you did you get that? Have you made any beach yet? We've got a chance to now you can see what they might look like. You can make some with stuff. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Something to do just keep them. Yeah, brilliant. Well, you're the lady to do it. Fantastic. 
Have we got any more notices, please? Anyone online needs to give a notice at all? I'm not getting an invitation from anybody waving at the front of the line, which is uh, what we'll do. Okay. Um, is it worth mentioning about the church opening on Thursdays? Oh, yeah. So, from this coming Thursday, the church will open for private prayer um, during the day. So, if you'd like to come in, just have a quiet time and to pray, it will be open and we'll be asking people to use that part of the church over there. Um, it's a lovely quiet time to come in and just be there with God and if you're having you know, some worries and stresses, it's just such a help, isn't it, to be able to come somewhere away from it for a while and soak in God's presence and his peace. So please do come in on Thursdays if you'd like to. And once again, thank you to Harry for all the technical um, backup today, which without which none of this could happen. Um, and to Melanie for the flute today, which is so lovely. Um, and to all those who help with producing services, because it doesn't just happen. And if I could say that the, the PCC is a vital part of helping to keep the church um, planning its programs, doing its mission and outreach, um, so please do consider offering. And if you don't like coming out in dark evenings, at the moment we do it on Zoom, so you can be tucked up safe and warm at home and just join us on Zoom. So um, we would love people to fill those vacancies that Janet mentioned, because we're more effective if more of you uh, are involved and represent our wider membership. Thank you very much.